So you're looking to soundproof your home or your condo, but you don't know if you should hire a professional or you should just keep looking on YouTube for some DIY options. Now, of course, if you go with a professional, the methods that they use to soundproof your wall or your ceiling are going to be different. They're going to be a lot more thorough in the soundproofing process than what you would typically do with a DIY option. And in this video, I'll show you exactly what a professional would do versus let's say what you would do as a DIY. But if you don't really want to hire a professional and pay a few thousand dollars or upwards of a thousand dollars to have them come to your home or condo and soundproof, there's a video right there. You can check that out. And that's more deep dive into DIY. Now a professional will come and first thing they do, take the drywall off. Look at what's behind. Most of the time, there will not be any insulation. As you can see in this video, there's no insulation between walls. Seal all the gaps and the cracks with acoustical caulking. As you can see on your screen, I'm just adding some acoustical caulking in the cracks and in between the joists because people wouldn't realize that why would you add in between the joists and the wall or the ceiling? It's, a, it's to mitigate the vibration. For all it costs for a tube of acoustic sealant, it's really worth it. Getting rid of all those gaps, all those cracks, and getting rid of that vibrational noise of the stomping, especially upstairs. And also all of the products I talk about in this video, I'll actually have links in the description below. And I'll also have a link to my website with a lot of more updated links to a lot of products. I'm making a product page because sometimes the links that are put in various videos, they might not have the updated material that I am currently talking about. So on that products page, it will be, everything will be updated periodically with the best prices. Most typically the, the links will be to Amazon and Home Depot. And those are affiliate links and they really help me make better content, make more content and actually buy supplies. So I really appreciate that. Once that is all done, they look at the electrical outlets and also the lights, the light fixtures, all of the electrical boxes that are now exposed, you can now add something called a putty pad around the back of that box to completely cover all the holes. Because if your wall is completely soundproof and you did it DIY, let's say you just added a second layer of drywall, well, the little holes inside your electrical outlet are still exposed. And usually electrical outlets are back to back on walls that you're sharing with another unit or you're sharing with another person in your house. Those holes with absolutely no insulation in the wall will let, it can let up to 50% of the noise back into the room. Now, of course, you can only do that if the if everything is exposed because it has to go behind it. Now, typically putty pads were used for fire prevention. If there's something that started in that electrical outlet, then it would slow things down and hopefully snuff it out. But it also works great for soundproofing because it covers all those holes without damaging anything without risking fire. It's basically to prevent fire. So that is a great thing. So now that all the gaps and the cracks are sealed, it is now time to add your acoustical insulation. Now, a lot of people say online and on YouTube, they say, why pay more for acoustical insulation? It doesn't work that much better than just your pink insulation or spray foam. Well, first of all, spray foam does not really work for soundproofing whatsoever. And the pink insulation, no, it just, it doesn't work as well. So if you use something like Quiet Rock, Safe and Sound, and something that is specifically made for acoustical insulation, for soundproofing, then it does work better. Now, now the thing is acoustical insulation, it, it's not really for soundproofing. It's more to deaden all of the sound that's coming through the wall, to change the sound, to get rid of that echo, to get rid of that high pitch noise. And that is exactly what it will do. It will change the noise to not make it as, as loud. Now, the next thing after the insulation is all completely done, this is where it kind of separates between DIY and professional because the next thing that should be done is to add a resilient channel. Now, the reason why you'd add a resilient channel, especially on the ceiling, is because it completely takes away the vibrational sound. All those footsteps that you were hearing, they should be gone, especially with the help of the acoustical insulation. It'll deaden that sound and then the resilient channel will completely eliminate the rest if it is installed correctly because if you were to install it yourself and then after all the resilient channel is all completely installed and then you place your drywall, you have to screw the drywall into the resilient channel. If that screw is, let's say, longer than the gap between the channel and the floor joist and the screw goes right into the floor joist, then you've basically eliminated that decoupled aspect and that's why it doesn't work for some people. The drywall that you install on the ceiling has to go directly on the channel. You screw it into the channel, 
but you have to make sure that the screw is not long enough to actually touch the floor joist. That's the most important thing because when some people do this DIY, they don't use the correct length of screws and they're a little bit too long. They go into the floor joist and your decoupled is, well, it's not decoupled anymore. It's, it's coupled. You coupled it back up. <clears throat> so keep it decoupled. Now, the drywall that would typically be used is 5 8 inch drywall. It is a little bit thicker than your half inch drywall and it makes a huge difference in stopping a lot of the sound coming through. Now, of course, there are different types of drywall. You can go a little bit further and uh, you can suggest a soundproof drywall. If you're not too sure of the different drywall that is meant for soundproofing, you can look, you can view that video right up there and it shows you different types of soundproofing drywall and how well they work for soundproofing. Now that the first layer of drywall is completely installed, they are not done. Now, this is where some professionals will use either acoustical compound or mass loaded vinyl to put in between the second layer of drywall on the wall or on the ceiling. I would personally suggest mass loaded vinyl. It's a very dense, heavy, rubbery material that not only stops sound, that is good for soundproofing, but it's also good for sound deadening. It will deaden the sound, whatever is left, that will be coming through. As I said, it's a little bit more expensive, but if you're already paying a professional to come to your home or condo, then might as well go with the extra mile, use mass loaded vinyl, you will not be disappointed. There is a, a few different types of mass loaded vinyl that you can buy, and you can also do this a DIY way if you're, if you're just wanting to soundproof it a little bit, you can add some mass loaded vinyl on your wall and then add a second layer of drywall. It does work very well. And, and mass loaded vinyl is not very difficult to install, which is, which is nice, but it does work better if you're, if you're two people installing it because it is quite heavy, those mass loaded vinyl rolls. If you want more information about mass loaded vinyl and what what it does video right there and I explain everything about mass loaded vinyl after all of that is complete it is time to put the second layer of drywall on the wall or the ceiling again 5 8 inch drywall so now that the second layer of drywall is completely installed it's now time for them to add their finishing touches now this is something that you can do yourself and the finishing touch usually is now that they've taken care of behind the electrical outlet usually there's still a gap between the electrical outlet box and the wall. If the outlet gap is quite large, something that you can't, that they can't seal with acoustical sealant, then they would use something called a backer rod. It's just something to basically cover that hole and it is easy to install and relatively cheap. And then whatever's left, whatever cracks or gaps that are left, they just put some acoustical sealant around and put the faceplate back on and then you're good to go. After all that is complete, you will see a huge difference between what you had before and what you have now. Now, as I said, it will cost more than just going DIY, but this is typically what a professional soundproofer would do if they go to your home, if they know what they're doing, because a lot of people, a lot of places, they don't really have a soundproofing store. They just call a contractor, a contractor comes in and they kind of do what they, what they think is right. And a lot of the time it's, it's fine, but it's really the resilient channel. If they've never installed it before, then you should really ask for a contractor that has installed successfully resilient channel. And that is what a professional will do when they go to your home and soundproof. Yes, it will be more expensive than just doing it the DIY, but the results will be a lot better. Leave a comment in the section below. If you have any questions, I'll try to come back to this video to look at questions and, <clears throat> and try to answer them in future videos. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.